what's up guys welcome back to wrench capital charts today we're taking a look at soundhound ai stock ticker symbol s o u n on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day wednesday march 20th all right guys so soundhound ai here today finished up just nine cents a share that's 1.09 percent to the upside now we discussed this after hours move a lot in last night's video if you caught that listen if you have not done so already please subscribe to the channel uh, I greatly appreciate it. But if you caught that video, you remember we talked about that a lot. Volume was actually reasonable in that move yesterday, which gave it a little bit more legitimacy. But remember in the video, we were very clear about how we have to take after hours, hours moves with a grain of salt. The real test is always market open the following day. Now, we opened lower. We gave back the majority of that move, well, really more than, than the after hours move, into the open. And then we bounced and actually tested getting close to that after hours move intraday, kind of like during the lunch period. And then eventually closed around 8.33 or exactly 8.33. Listen, the stock is down 15, 20 cents here in the after hours. As always, right, whether a move is in your favor or going against your current bias sentiment, see that volume in the after hours? This is what it looks like 99%, probably more of days. Volume is very low. It's incredibly easy to bully and therefore pump stocks in the after hours so always take it with a grain of salt now let's get started here on a soundhound stock with our daily ritual the volume profile analysis on the five minute chart so on this chart what we're looking to, to do is pull out as much bias hidden bias as we possibly can that isn't really present at all simply looking at the price action of the stock. We have to dig deeper, go one layer deeper, peel back the onion and look at the volume profile. It gives us some days a much deeper understanding of today's move. So let's do that. Now we need three things to really pull this off. We need big changes in volume that are obvious. Those changes need to correlate with obvious, usually pretty big um, moves in stock price. And the volume profile on those moves it needs to be outside of what is contextual for that particular time of day, right? Now let's look here. This one is really easy today. The moves I'm interested in are that move, and then this this little fade and, and quick recovery that we got. Now a lot of people look at a move like this and say, well, it's just kind of like a net neutral. We ended up in essentially the same spot. In terms of price, which is ultimately, of course, you know, in the end what really matters, sure. But, but the truth is, Two moves, even if equal, they're not necessarily created equal once you start peeling back that onion. So we'll take a look at that. And then I want to also look at this fade into the close that we got. Those three moves are what I am uh, most focused on here on the volume profile today, heading into tomorrow, Wednesday. Now, if we look here at the profile, you can see this was broken up, right? It wasn't consistent elevated volume, you know, all back to back green bars. It's broken up by a few lower volume bars, a couple of red bars. But the truth is, there's some rather obvious bullish bias. Once we dig down into the volume profile as well, I mean, you can see there's bullish bias by the price movement. But I want another layer, another factor. Because believe it or not, you can see moves upside like this with no real bias in the chain because it's such low volume, or not in the chain, but in the, in the volume profile because it's such low volume. That happens actually pretty often, and if you don't peel back that layer, you'll be completely unaware of that. But the truth is, here on SoundHound today, that first upside move intraday had some rather heavy uh, bullish bias here. Now, if we look at this fade in recovery, we can see that we, we certainly had a fade of volume coming in to the fade in price, right? And then we got a little bit of a pop. Now, it's, it's not as out of context as I would like, to be honest. And then considering this recovery, we did get lower volume and then a little bit of a pop. But truthfully, if, you know, if you're telling me I have to give you some kind of bias for this fade and pop and, and, and recovery more so in stock price, um, I, I would give this a slight bias to the bears just because we had a few more, a little bit more consistency with that somewhat elevated bearish volume, but truthfully, it kind of blends in quite a bit with the volume around it. The only thing that's really throwing that off is the consistent red bars. We got kind of a similar deal back here coming off of that upside move. The only thing here is that we got that fade heading into the little bit of a pop. The truth is, though, that's simply one, one bar at the top of that move, 
which, you know, with a wick, you're going to see some buy and selling uh, pressure hitting each other. And that turns into a battle, which is naturally going to pump volume anyway. So that th this second move, a slight bearish bias, but not nearly as, as much of a bias as this first move to the bullish side. If, you know, we have to remain as unbiased as possible here. And that, that's the truth with these two moves. Now, if we look at this last little move, this fade we got into the close, there certainly is a slight bearish bias, though I would prefer, you know, if I'm if I was a bear looking at this to see four or five consistent candles in a row of 1.5 million a piece um, with very little variation. You, sure, I, I would, of course, prefer that. But it would be, I think, um, a little bit perhaps ignorant in the short term. To, see, to, to, to not really see a small bearish bias there heading into the close, even though we do expect an uptick in volume heading into the close anyway. Uh, the truth is, the biggest bias here in the volume profile today was on this, this first move um, before we got that bit of a fade back into the close. Really, this recovery move had, had the biggest bias on the day. Now, let's move on to the psychological and self-fulfilling prophecy levels that I'm paying attention to. Come tomorrow, Wednesday, here on SoundHound Stock, you can see on the 30-minute chart, these self-fulfilling prophecy indicators, the 200 period and the 50 period, they're slowly coming together to form a tightening channel. And, and truthfully, I would not be surprised at all to see a, a hard decision out of SoundHound on the 30-minute tomorrow, cracking one way or the other. Bulls, notice how the 200 period is lining up with that psychological round number of eight bucks a share. We're going to want to see any downside test of that hold hard with a high volume bounce away. And the ideal scenario here for a bull is to get a high volume rip upside through that 50 period, a low volume retest, and then a hard high volume bounce away. Just get away from that level, put some distance between us and the eight bucks a share, really. Now, bears, notice how this 50 period is curling downside. You guys would love to see a continuation of that. Any upside test, hard, high volume rejection, but really a downside break of the 200 period and a sustained break, a clean break and hold beneath there for the majority of the trading day. That would be kind of like a double whammy because you're breaking the round number of eight bucks a share and the 200 period here on the 30 minute chart. That's what you bears would primarily be focused on here tomorrow, at least on this chart specifically and what you bulls ideally would, would not want to see. Okay, let's move on here now to the four hour chart and take a look. You can see, you know, not a ton to talk about here, but what I will be watching is this 50 period. Notice bulls, how it's continuing upside, a continuation upside of this getting up towards 750 is close to eight bucks a share. You know, it's going to take some time. It's a slower moving, moving average on the four hour, uh, but just as much ground, gaining as much ground as possible to the upside to keep that psychological barrier as high and close to the stock as possible. That would be the best case scenario for bulls. Bears, you'd obviously like to see the opposite of that, a flattening out of that moving average, really ahead of like 750 ideally. Now, let's move on here to the most important chart of all. If there's one chart you do not skip, it's always going to be the daily. Listen again, as always, the daily doesn't show after hours movement, so understand it is a little bit lower currently in the after hours, but again, take that movement with a grain of salt. We were talking yesterday a lot about these three levels within this very obvious range that we currently have going on between 8 and 9 with 850 because you know a stock priced below 10 the 50 cent um, areas are going to be treated as psychological little round number areas usually not quite as as strong or obvious as the whole numbers but they're certainly there so what i'm really looking at here bulls any downside test of eight i want to see that hold on high volume a break above and hold above 850 with any retest of 850 holding on decent volume would be the ideal scenario that could give us a, a nice platform to start making our way up toward nine here. It's really simple, right? Bears, it's kind of the exact opposite. Any upside test of nine, again, keep in mind that from the closing price, not even the after hours price, you're talking about an 8% upside move. Um, but still, any up, we've seen crazier things out of SoundHound, right? Any upside test of nine, you're going to want to hold off nine because nine is kind of one of your last frontiers before 10 bucks a share, which is a huge level here. But ideally, bears, keeping below 850 is kind of the backstop target if you're a bear, at least ideally. And then really your target looking ahead into tomorrow, Wednesday, you guys would love to see a crack below eight bucks a share and, and get a close here beneath eight bucks a share. Ideally, getting beneath there and holding as, as early in the day as possible. Now, time for my favorite part of the video here. What was the bias coming out of the options chain from the traders today 
who are positioning themselves heading into tomorrow. So we had about 185,000 total contracts traded, decent sample size. 123,000 of those were calls, and about 62,000 of those were puts. So we are seeing here on SoundHound today quite the call side bias on the overall ratio. If we start breaking this down by time frame though, you can see that 0 to 20 range is actually leaning a bit to the, to the put side, right? Those are those short-term speculators. Just under 13,000 calls and a little over 18,000 puts. However, as you start to look down, as you go down deeper, you know, closer to at the money and then deeper in the money, it starts to lean heavier and heavier, at least ratio-wise, to the call side. As those expiration dates on those contracts, on average, get further and further out. Listen, guys, if your goal is to try to expedite the process of going part-time, maybe even full-time as a trader, if that is your goal to begin with, go ahead and take a look at our Wrench Capital Gold server. That link in the pinned comment will allow you to get grandfathered in, so you can kind of be, be immune to future price raises. I'm in there every day working with not only my Platinum one-on-one -on -one members, but also sending out my personal scalp setup alerts, in-play stock alerts, human-verified unusual options activity, as well as swing trade setup alerts. Hope to see you inside for tomorrow's trading day. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one.